The Infra Pioneer Podcast, Infrastructure Construction, from the perspective of BIM specialists and on-site engineers. So, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you, Toriola. And uh, what I watched your resume, I, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think you are much more better to tell everything what you are doing. You have quite a long list of uh, different tasks, what you are doing. <laughs> yeah, I was reading that uh, all the research on improvements and then uh, drawings and bits and estimations and uh, uh, all those solutions of, on pavements and uh, such, how you manage doing all those things. Yeah, I, I saw you earlier on the link, my link, LinkedIn page. I, 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 got, I thought you got that from there. Yeah, yeah, I made a quick uh, quick study on your LinkedIn. Thank, thank, thank you. Great. I'm I'm really curious about the current uh, like state of uh, infrastructure construction in uh, Nigeria. Like, how is it? Like, is the machine uh, guidance uh, or how you are utilizing BIM and everything? Uh, Nigeria, like any other developing country, we are trying to uh, increase our infrastructure facilities, ensuring more roads are uh, constructed, uh, uh, good house for the citizens, and then uh, ensure we have power, you know, all of our settlements and the like so others. Uh, the government are doing a bit in ensuring this. And then uh, over time, based on this little or no continuity, we'll be having some setbacks. But the French government is doing its best, I believe, to ensure that um, the, the country is well um, positioned among co communities of states um, in the world. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when it comes to like uh, construction itself, it's how to say it's such a old school industry that uh, even in Finland, <laughs> there. Uh, development and all these uh, changes to the more beam focused uh, construction it's always a how to say a struggle to get uh, everyone included like well if you read about beam and there's a lot of uh, advertising about collaborations and uh, visualization but then uh, even when in uh, Finland when you go to the construction sites you mostly just are seeing the foremen, they still use the paper PDFs that they're constructing, but machines nowadays most commonly have the machine guidance systems. So that's the most common way of uh, utilizing BIM in Finland. That's true. How's in uh, Nigeria then? Uh, like, is the machine control systems uh, common or they are still bit by bit adapting? Uh, we, we use um, quick mates, just try to get up with the other and rest of the world. So then, uh, that way you have got the like requirement of surveyors uh, lesser, or what kind of benefits uh, have those provided? Uh, they work, we work as a team. Uh, each of those uh, sections, the surveyors are just to ensure that the road are well built. Ah. It sounds really cool, really cool. Yeah, and it's uh, it's really interesting. Like for me, at least, it's the most uh, fascinating part in BIM is that uh, there's not really one direct way to use it. It's just the possibilities of what you can when you now get access to this interface of uh, digital uh, environment where the all the plans are made more accessible, what everything, uh, different things can be done. For example, like uh, my current project uh, that I'm now doing, we, of course, we have the machine guidance systems, so, so we have all the models for each different layers of uh, road that we give to the machines and they will dig and they will build. But also we are trying to get uh, so, uh, foremen to pick up the surveyors uh, GNS, GNSS receiver. The really simple and handy sticker for the surveyors. So on the use of the foramen, so foramen could go 
onto the site and they could directly put the stick on the ground and see the, all the heights and uh, uh, deltas compared to the, the layers or surfaces what we want to achieve. Like trying to... Yeah, we'll do exactly... Ah, uh, please say. Yeah, we'll do exactly the same here. Yeah. We, we are far from um, the, 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 old, the old ways of um, meetings. But we we'll do a bit back, but then we are still we are coming up. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think it's uh, really fascinating to see like uh, when you get uh, foremen and uh, then also like uh, basic uh, workmen who goes with the shovels and uh, doing the water pay water management installations and all those. Uh, when you give them the stick, yeah. then they can have like uh, very autonomous work because they don't need any more the surveyor or the now machine guidance driver to come and instruct them that where the pipe should be and is they are they on the correct height they can themselves check and it's it has made the workflow so much clearer and easier and also what i see is happening is that when they get more more in touch with uh, having this ability to always connect the data and check uh, on the models they have also then explored the possibilities that what else uh, all those digital uh, pdfs like uh, for example, some kind of like uh, background materials like DXF is uh, materials uh, from the tablet and then they can also see where they are, what's their location, how much to the surface and also all those like background maps to see that what other equipments are we now installing on the on the, this street or other places. And I think that's, uh, that's at least in Finland, uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, like uh, common way really to get uh, get them I involved. Uh, we hear news about uh, your area and um, in uh, conjunction with New Zealand and the rest. Uh, it's a cool place. Ah, how's then? Uh, how's the project there in the uh, Zealand group? You said right. I I know. I just you know they came up in news not quite long about the the mass shooting. When I learned you are in the neighboring country, the neighboring country to Finland, is it? Uh, yeah, it's like part of the Scandinavian uh, countries, like okay. next to Russia. Okay. Okay. So no we problem. we get uh, snow and it's really cold at the winter, but on the summer it's uh, something like maybe thirty degrees warm. For for us it's really hot. For you guys, I think it's normal. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's normal. Yeah, it's been, been here for a long time, so it's normal. <laughs> By the way, now when you have done a lot of research on the like. Uh, all those pavements and uh, asphalt. Uh, it was just really interesting that you had like uh, asphalt made of uh, uh, wasted uh, uh, waste plastics and all those different things. So like, I'm really curious of like what kind of uh, innovations you have uh, figured out in the uh, Reynolds construction. Apparently, yeah, we. We don't use um, the waste mat. It's just uh, the one you the the right top you saw on waste material is actually a, a project back then in school. All right. So, but then on the this project I am is um, a a polymer infused um, asphalt, just to ensure that we bit up the property of the as for for better service, but some some places in the world, yes, I learned of a um, uh, uh, yeah, one uh, Indian engineer who, who I think kick started um, the use of waste plastic uh, for better pavement, and as in going around the world, one, I saw at the home Farqua, is it Farqua in England or so? Yeah, it's right. really interesting uh, because, like uh, in Finland, it's uh, all the materials from uh, all the demands come from the client, and it's really strict that uh, what each 
materials and how big uh, the rocks or the stones in that material can be and especially with the asphalt it has to be like specific uh, mix. Yeah, that, that's done by the contractor. Yeah, you the client says you what uh give you how long you want its project to its um, job to last. So you go around fixing um what could meet up with, meet and up then with. Uh, the constituent of the asphalt actually, and then um, you come up with a design and then you fix the job. Ah, you mean like um, the road maintenance when there comes holes for fixing uh, that purposes is? And you know what? Earlier you said um, clients give you the, what, the, what he wants of the makeup of the asphalt. The contractor does that too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think it's uh, really cool to like really uh, develop that uh, further to make those asphalts much more uh, lifelong that there would be, yeah. wouldn't wouldn't be such a huge uh, maintenance uh, cost as like well I think every country in the whole world have a lot of uh, how to say the maintenance debt like we don't have enough money to repair the existing uh, roads and uh, bridges and uh, rails. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, part of reducing the maintenance cost is the cost of actually modifying the. the Proposed job, the proposed as well. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, by that, you may need to check um, what the maintenance cost will be. Because uh, you, you, by modifying, you, you tend to re reduce um, the damages, the, the, the known or no damages to incur. Uh, so, but then, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, um, put down the, the need to maintain at a later time. Woman, what is, where do woman, woman in fact, what is certain? And then all of that. So we, of course, the culture is falling around there, which are the most places also. But then we have to still maintain, both do at a later cost, at a later Yeah, also. exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, and it's uh, neat to see, like, I think uh, the big uh, improvement, like uh, finding out the, the, how to say, the golden balance between the quality and uh, how to say quality of the material and then uh, the cost of material like for example we had uh, maybe now 30 30 years ago in Finland we had like this big uh, well in that time it was innovation but uh, it was a big boom of like hey all the water maintenance pipes let's not make uh, them from plastic let's make them from uh, concrete that it's cheap and we can make it and it should be long lasting and they projected that okay it will hold uh, at least next 50 years uh, this uh, concrete pipe but now then uh, uh, it has uh, resulted that uh, the concrete pipes requires much more attention than when it's building uh, when you build it on the ground that it has the uh, as optimal structure as possible otherwise it will go pro broken in uh, 10 years or 20 years so there has been a lot of issues like an extra costs when using the uh, concrete pipes or for the water man management and it's uh, it's interesting to see like uh, uh, as you said uh, that when uh, mixing the different compounds and finding uh, much more durable uh, options for the especially pavement that uh, because it's it's uh, well mostly it's uh, getting always uh, more and more bad shapes uh, when the drives are like cars driving uh, top of them. You also had a lot of good, uh, good uh, like thoughts and uh, stuff about the serviceability and uh, transport systems. Uh, can you explain more about those things? Uh, thank you. Uh... The only serviceability, the ensuring that this it meets the needs of the motor, the road users. We ensure that these needs are not only temporary, but then for a long, a permanent basis, a longer term. Uh, and that's why we have them um, infuse the polymer, which is um, a sort of vitamin from uh, South Africa here, 
to ensure that uh, the service life of the road is uh, about the transport system. Uh, yes, yeah, in major cities, municipal towns here in Nigeria, we have a, 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 a bus system. Conjunction is uh, used in our major cities. Uh, so in planning the transport systems, we government in those uh, main, main cities uh, have some um, how I call it modern buses, luxurious buses, which we come, which um at the lower which will um. So is it uh, is it more about the planning the road structure for the better accessibility, or is it more? Uh, focused on the like uh, the pavements and uh, making it more uh, durable that it would stay uh, drivable uh, much longer. Uh, uh, this transport, this the what I only said was is not about making the pavement accessible. Is is about reducing congestion in the major cities. But what is about, about the uh, this longer service life is about is on um, the modification of the pavement. These are two sets. The, the better service here, better transport service here, I earlier said. The advantage in major cities here we have a um, conjunction, uh, conjunction, which is majorly Lagos, <laughs> Cardinal, and then um, Abuja. Uh, the young, the upcoming states in the country have not been able to afford that because they big um capital ensuring in a bit to ensure that car owners leave their vehicles at home, join the public transport to their mm. work. And then we have a better society, less congestion. Yeah, yeah, the congestion is uh, tough trouble. Like, uh, for example, in Finland, there has been uh, many of like big projects of uh, trying, to fi- trying to simulate the congestions in the cities and uh, see... Uh, about where where it uh, happens and uh, what makes it, and then uh, start uh, designing new roads to resolve those uh, congestions, but uh, yeah. not any like effective uh, methods have yet to found. Like yeah, I, I, I think to make it effective, we will, we will need stricter government policies. Uh, places like um, um, uh, Estonia. If you read over at Estonia, we it is I've been practiced more than twenty or thirty years there. You know there's a government policy compelling motorists to 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 uh, use those public transport systems. I think that that place could, could, I don't know if you of Curitiba. If you check your uh, check internet, you have because uh, uh, Curitiba we actually adopt a system from Curitiba. So uh-huh. if you're getting those things done as you would like to have in Finland. I think that should be a one strict government policy, and then you know, each time we help increase increasing the need, our need, but they are not meeting the need. Then in addition to meet increasing the capacity, the particular capacity. Yeah, yeah. And government policy to as a place. Yeah, I agree fully. Also, like uh, for example, Estonia and Finland, uh, the population is much smaller. Like for example, our capital city, where most of the contestants. Uh, uh, in a whole uh, country happens it's uh, like 1.5 million maybe 2 million uh, people so maybe I would say 1 million cars maybe is driving there so it's much smaller case like for example we are in Finland they're focusing a lot of like uh, intersections and making them much more accessible so pay- so all those like um, a bigger roads that uh, transport uh, cars to their destinations. So uh, the all the interchange, uh, yeah. Sorry, my English just <laughs> froze up. Inter, uh, I can't even remember the word. Inter. Well, anyways, those places where you exit the big road to smaller road. Intersections. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, so we are more focusing on like uh, trying to make enough uh, good uh, adjutants to the big roads that uh, more earlier the car can get on the day, away from the fast moving traffic and then having a much more slower, oh, 
how to say, slow or smoother way to his exit. And that way trying to control the congestions that it would go much smoother. But uh, it's still uh, like, uh, well, it's hard to say because like, for example, when I visited uh, Jakarta in uh, Indonesia, it's, uh, I wouldn't uh, <laughs> want to go plan the traffic plans in uh, there because it's completely different game. Like, I think it's uh, similar to Lagos. Lagos is a really huge city, so I think it's okay. also much more difficult than just having a <laughs> easier time. Well, that, for that. Like, that would be a way. That would be a way. If you have the way, the intent to make it work, that would always be a way. For that time, it just make, might take time to go to Asia and adjust, but they will, find, they will, of course, finally adjust. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, a little bit more about the the concrete, uh, not the concrete, I mean the pavements uh, in the Lagos. Uh, do you also have uh, uh, the machines that, uh, well, let's say we have the road here and there's, uh, on the maintenance, there's a little bit uh, small of those, like the pavement has completely uh, run out and it's like a bump in there. And uh, then there's machines that... Uh, go through them and when they see there's a bump they only fill the pavement to this place it's called i think it's something like micro micro pavement uh, management or something like that like it's something uh, visualizing the uh, the one that surfaces and immediately when he when the equipment sees that there's more uh, deep depth to that hole or the where he's uh, surveying than what he wants, then he starts filling it with uh, asphalt. And we don't, I, I, I'm not saying that from that side. We don't, I'm not saying that that's in practice there. Uh, do, uh, the road them, what they call them in the main town, in Lagos main town, they have some uh, a quick way of fixing the part, part um, portions on the road. Majorly, as it is practice is to go on a road patching. You, when you notice a, uh, a depression or a rot or any of the road defects on road, a thing will go out. So, it's on uh, portions of asphalt, find, uh, maintain, do some uh, maintenance on the spot, and then bring the bring over the surface. Uh, mm. Sometimes, based on the discretion of whoever is living. It could be uh, it could be um, patched back to the same surface or a bit higher than the existing, so that compassion from motorists could bring bring it back. But then, what the other said, I will work on that. I will um, read on it, and then probably <laughs> when you have some other time or when I have the chance to read the thing, <laughs> maybe I will get it implemented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's just like. Uh, at least in uh, Finland, uh, because it's all the machine automation has come uh, really huge. Because well, at the current state, there isn't enough for workers for the construction industry itself in here, and uh, that's same why. Same thing. <laughs> same there. Are plenty, you got a shot of workers there. There are plenty of workers there in Nigeria. <laughs> hundreds of them. <laughs> that's true. That's uh, that's good. Because in here, that's why we have to have made such a drastic measures to automate and get the machine doing every part because oh. we don't have enough uh, like workers here. And I, I get to so the sometimes that um, necessity has brought it to embrace the uh, digital. But then, yeah, we have, we have more than enough and manpower. Of course, we like to embrace them. Um, in modern, right? As, as well, then reduce much of our working strength. So uh, we still we like to have them at work. Unlike your side, we like you are you are staff short, and then you are embracing them and they get a um, construction work. But then it's a good. It, it makes it good. I would, I would like to say, of course, you make the work done easier. Though with a reduced workforce, which um, my engineers would not like to. <laughs> we might not like to do that because people who are currently working, of course, they, they, from them, they feed families and some neighbors. 
but then, uh, but then, actually, look at let us say you know how to go about this. Technology, the, the development has to say come in anyway. Mm. Uh, but then, we'll give, when when it, it, it comes, uh, our people will have gotten better, be better engaged to handle the development, and then get other opportunities also. Also. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, and I think uh, it's uh, I think it's a bit of a funny thing about BIM that it's how to say it has become uh, the hot potato in the industry that everyone wants to understand and utilize BIM and uh, get uh, uh, trying to benefit from it. But I think the crucial thing is that uh, the workforce needs to first uh, well it cannot be like addition that we have the workforce and then we have the beam and we just put all together i think it uh, should somehow be the same uh, workforce that was before that now utilizes the beam in the new ways that makes the work more efficient and uh, better quality great by the way, how did you get yourself uh, uh, into the BIM? Like, what uh, got you uh, your interest into the BIM at the first place? Uh, of course, I read you know, the right thing and give some interest into BIM. But then I have not had to understand it because the usage and work here could be. Because it's not as used there. So, mm. I mean, even as that, uh, yeah. But over time, some, uh, I want to invest more time on that and then see how best it fits work here. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's, uh, it's quite uh, some like fitting, like it's uh, not directly the beam models that you get from designers. It takes quite a effort to make them uh, usable in the construction itself. Like at least for me, I have a, <laughs> I don't know, last couple of weeks, I have been like just watching those BIM models and uh, combining them and uh, making uh, iterations and uh, such like uh, before they can go to the machine guidance systems and the drilling machines and uh, for the surveyors and uh, foreman's use. It's uh, <laughs> quite a lot of uh, work. I will invest more time. I will with all, with all my gray area. I will get across. Now, what I think, I will come up with the understanding also. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Great. Um, do you have any other things? Uh, because well, your resume was such a long, <laughs> long list. Uh, I'm just curious of like how. Are things in uh, in La uh, Laos? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. My bad. Sorry, Lagos. What the question again? What the question again? What the uh, question again? Like, uh, what the what are the new things that people are talking in uh, Lagos in construction industry? Like About construction. Like, yeah. Is it? Yeah, for construction. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, if you get the job done better, I think people will praise you. Uh, if you will uh, tell them you have a key to have a long lasting infrastructure or a solution to a problem, uh, of course you you will be welcome. But really, I can, except for the modification we are on, I have not seen anything. Uh, new on your system. Mm. We have always been, we've always been following this um, uh, traditional ways of getting things done, and then um, uh, that's all. That's all. That's, that's uh, no major, uh, no major uh, new way. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really cool. And it's uh, it's interesting to see like uh, where does the these things goes like for example I'm really interested to getting to more acknowledge myself with the with the drones and the like um, photogrammic uh, map makings and uh, all those things. Oh, we have those there also. Hey, have you yet uh, we, had a chance? That's to... what we call you. <laughs> have you yet I, had I... a chance to? 
drive I, I personally, I personally have not driven driv- one, but then on plenty on my side, we don't we don't have one resident on our side. We they do bring one in. Uh, if that's what we call newness in the work, I think we have that. Yeah. Also. So. What kind of, by the way, softwares you are using uh, with the drones? Do you know? Uh, I think majorly is what we use that for area computation. I'm not in charge of the one who and who drives uh, the drone. Mm. So I, okay, so uh, uh, sometimes we take area views of the project and few other things, but then it's no under my, not within my <laughs> control. Not um, that's not my response. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's really interesting because, like, for designing and uh, uh, before the designing, even the drones and uh, photogrammic, uh, photographic uh, mappings are really, really good way to visualize the space and where all the roads and bridges and uh, so on will be built. I'm really curious just uh, to find uh, ways to, like, how to support. Uh, how to support the construction people and the foremans and uh, even the project managers with this uh, visual aid because it's also easy to like plug into the virtual uh, reality and uh, such. Yeah, yeah right. You, uh, I got it. So uh, I understand how the the is like how um, the usage of that. I read about that, but then we are just in full. Of course, we have it, but the full usage, full understanding, full usage will come come with time. Yeah, just on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's uh, still like taking its first steps, and uh, people are just more wondering how we could benefit from this and uh, so on. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, right. Sorry, I'm gonna be speaker. Great. Uh, I think that's uh, more. Do you have Do you have other thoughts uh, or? Yeah. You, you aside from the mm. you also, yeah. Also, add some of the future of the infrastructure in Nigeria. Uh, can you repeat, sorry? So the area acts on the future of um, infrastructure construction in Nigeria. Uh, you, you, say, uh, you are saying that who taught uh, infrastructure construction in Nigeria? Or, sorry, yeah. I'm a little bit confused. So the future, how, how, what, what the future holds for us? For oh, infrastructure, yeah. You got that? Uh, uh, let me open <laughs> Sorry, uh, can you type it? Yeah, yeah, that would be really interesting. Like, uh, uh, basically, my thought was that uh, what is happening on the like governmental level, and uh, then uh, how the uh, business of uh, uh, city designing and then uh, road designing and then construction and the maintenance is uh, reacting to that. Uh, just in addition, I'd like to say that um, in the future roads are good for us. We trust in God that um, the people in government to also see the need to, uh, like the federal government actually, the people in some kind of, I mean, you know, these this issues, these um, are based on continuity, nothing, you can't fix all in a day. Mm. So I pray that they can't come in government after the president. We actually see the media team. I see infrastructure could generate them some revenue and then invest and invest and invest again in um, infrastructure development. Uh, we are doing more and we still need to do more. So, and I have a recommendation for funding we have, we have few public part, private partnerships here, some rules who are co built by governments and um, private enterprises. So we don't have so much of them because of them. We need to recover re- re- the money used to execute this project. Mm-hmm. But then things are going, are going on well. 
and we pray for a for stability in our political system. Yeah, is it the more like uh, like does the government policies more slow down uh, the development of uh, infrastructure construction in uh, Nigeria, or is it more pushing forward or letting the uh, the business side do the development themselves? All right. Uh, for instance, where we are now, this current regime. In our government, um, the government, uh, um, I like to say they uh, I believe they are doing their best. They are so much investing in infrastructure, the present government. Then it will not, they will not, the, the government will not be able to fix all. So, mm, yeah. So we pray that in subsequent government, we have been doing this. Now, as to the business, business enterprises, um, government have to give them a good grant for them. To do this job, because uh, they they are, they work for profit, and if they were to do a job for the public, they could require uh, tax-free some incentives from the government. And if the government will not um, encourage them by saying that um, if you will do this for this for us, we will do this for you. Yeah, Sounds like a yeah. partnership. A bring, I give you thing. So, uh, but then I believe the current government is doing their best. And I hope do no matter how best you are doing, you are you can totally do more. Uh, so we believe that then um, up to this, of course we are still just a year in four years. A year of the four different government has four years to use, just one three after the expiration of the four years, we could have subsequent government that was coming on which to the need of to uh, to develop infrastructure and then Channel much of channels and resources to the implementation. Yeah, and I, I think it's a like really challenging part because like the uh, government contracts. Uh, All right, right. Now yeah. I get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they uh, are part of. <laughs> they are very, very uh, brutal because it it uh, demand it makes such demands that you really cannot. Develop further or find uh, uh, other I solutions. I have to say, one of the major issues is as it's funding. But which the uh, most part government here in Nigeria sometimes, and it's not even part government, people in government themselves. I know sometimes the AI, AI um, Nigeria is a, the state of many, 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 many tribes. Uh, so one of the things we have here is. Oh, like oh, oh, like oh. Some parts trying to bring. Uh, let me let me just find a word for that. Uh, some political parts ensuring that they, no, so because we are, Nigeria is a, we have regions there, mm. and then uh, on it right. If you are to execute a job. At is on a, a region here in Nigeria, you must ensure the government should ensure that a similar project is executed on other regions of the country. So that that in a bit is a problem on the government. Uh, and you know, regions are problem specific. What is particular to a region is quite different from what is the problem of the other. Then based on people in government, they believe that um, even if um, uh, 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 region A is having two kilometer road, region C should also have two kilometer road. And then that could be a problem of the government and um, it has been affected past time. It affected it brought us to this level of infrastructure development. Uh, so political stability could be one. Uh, some other time funding. You know, when you ensure uh, when you are thinking of having a project on all in all regions of the country, then you look at how to fund the project. Then if you are to, by prayer, compelled to do that, those projects would die before, even before the completion. Because the, much of the state resources are channeled with, yeah, which I know even in law. So that's another. Sometimes, sometimes also weather, just like any other place in the world, uh, weather is uh, a challenge. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's true. So when, and, when it's raining, like, normally when it's snowy there, you know, your part, you tend to reduce work. Uh, so, so that's the biggest thing I think that we have. We are, entire, we are facing each one. Yeah, and I think it's uh, it's really important to like uh, get that uh, how to say freedom, uh, uh, how to say uh, possibility to suggest alternative ways on those uh, government uh, and municipality demands and uh, contracts because uh, at least like in uh, Finland it has allowed a lot of different options. Uh, for the projects to make it either cheaper or better quality or other ways. And it has uh, built this flexibility of uh, doing things. But again, it's a <laughs> slow process. It's uh, hard to make the changes. Yeah, majorly government takes all. Government builds the road. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes when, when it affects it, a business or a major business in town, the business owner could come to meet the government and say, let me do this, but then I still pay you taxes. Can you give me a tax? And this also period of time could be tax-free for me. If they have a real negotiation, he execute the road, execute the infrastructure. Oh, wow. If otherwise, the road stay bad. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I We don't have... Uh, like, does the company then own the road uh, until... He has got the, how to say, the fees to cover the construction, or how does it go? Can you repeat that? Like, uh, when the uh, construction company comes to the government and uh, offers them to build the road to get those uh, uh, tax, tax uh, redemptions, right? Yeah. Uh, Business owners. Business owners, not not commercial companies. Business owners, people have businesses and they probably the road points for structures affecting their business. They can meet with the government and then negotiate. Yeah, if government are not coming forward to fix the road, then we will fix it for you. But then what what will you do in return? <laughs> yeah, that it is. Yeah. That's an interesting way to do business. <laughs> <laughs> we do we this because it is majorly the responsibility of the government as part of the facilities they provide for the citizen infrastructure. So if they are fund one, one a business or now or an individual who probably is being affected by the uh, the irresponsiveness of the government, they can come up and say, Government, I mean I yeah, I'm offering this. What are you offering the return? <laughs> Does it come uh, much more profitable for the construction company to do it uh, that way than uh, the normal way of uh, bidding for the project? No, you don't get that. Uh, the construction companies they are contract on their own, so they they are not and I don't, they are not the one negotiating with the government. Whoever is giving out the job, probably the a business owner. Or a financier, or a company, or a bank, mm. or the government. They are, they are they are on the side of the clients. They, are, they could be clients, but contract or contract complaints are ones who will take on the job to execute for whoever is paying. So contract companies don't speak with the government. Oh, okay, okay, all right. In other way, if they are affected by the job, job too, they can they can meet the government to do the job for them also. Yeah, I, I hope we got that. Okay, okay, that's really interesting. How, how, is it, how is it like on your side? Is it that um, if you are just like to fix it, I just jump on the site and then fix it for the pop for the for the citizen? Yeah, that's it. Uh, well. Uh... <sighs> Sometimes, like, it really depends how they are, but mainly it's just, uh, like, government having a bid, uh, bid contest among all uh, construction companies for each project. Like, public right. pu public tendering is the, mostly the we that, only way. We did that. We did that. Uh, yeah, also, when you have a job, you call for tender. People come and then say, uh, Mr. Joe, I'm doing this job for you for 
a million naira, some say a 1.2 million. So based on your quotations and the rest, you give it out. And based on some internal politics, you give to whoever you could get the job done at your own taste. It's it's obtainable here also. Yeah, that's that's basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> Great, it's uh, it's uh, interesting to hear that there's uh, such uh, different ways of uh, doing things in uh, Nigeria. Really need to understand more about the depths of uh, that. That's really cool if uh, that could be implemented in uh, Finland as well. That's all. You can just, just take a case study and study it <laughs> well before execution. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be lost, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I don't know what's wrong with my audio, but it's uh, some like it's a little bit cracking all the if time. No problem. The same thing you didn't get. Send me mail. I will give you a comprehensive account so you can study it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Would be. I will send the email. By the all way, right, no by the way, is there anything uh out of uh, like out of um. Uh, from uh, other topics is there anything that uh, we in uh, like in infra pioneer uh, site could uh, help you or support you more is there anything this time that kind of support me more as an engineer is it yeah like uh, in your work or uh, like at least for me the plan like i would really want to find a somehow like the effective way of uh, uh, improving the construction industry much more faster because I feel that uh, the construction industry is moving too slow. It's it's really behind from every other industry except maybe ag- ag- agriculture. But uh, like construction industry isn't developing so fast and uh, I would really want to get, uh, well, find a way to really influence uh, for this uh, change agent to really get uh, more efficiency and more ideas from the, in the, the like, uh, government what, perspective, of course. In my own view. Yeah. Government do what? Like, uh, we get a lot of ideas and, uh, of course, uh, attention from uh, government uh, officials but uh, i think the construction and then the design agencies are like it's uh, the uh, how to say the change uh really requires most of the change in the work itself like in when uh, doing the designs or the construction or the maintenance all right uh it's pure what i got from what you said is that uh, <laughs> ways of getting them um, getting them um, the construction sector improved I think it's by being you as you are into uh, getting things done quicker you know if construction jobs will be get will be done more quicker based on eliminating all the constructions we already mentioned I think it's it's, it's a it's a means of a, uh, a, 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 it to be a good one for the construction mm, yeah yeah and yeah, as, as you earlier mentioned that from the government that um, probably they let down the the, the sector to deliver. Yeah, what they do majorly is to, of course, based on competition, people sometimes, based on people improve based on competition. When you don't see a competitor sometimes, you tend to be relaxed. <laughs> so, that's uh, true. <laughs> that's true. That's like, um, there are plenty of competitors here in town. Yeah. So, when you, I think by this, yeah. So by government give people to who they believe could do the job, and that's enough competition in town, which um, I think is a drive for uh, effectiveness. Uh, uh, but then on the side of government, aside for that, there is no major thing they are doing, but they inspect jobs, ensuring that um, what you are giving to the masses are uh, and of good of standard, uh, uh, and the supervisors and then and then make payments. Yeah, I agree with you fully on that. Like, I think uh, even though <laughs> maybe every construction company is complaining that uh, uh, the government is always choosing the cheapest uh, offer to build the road or build the bridge and uh, such, but I think that's good because 
uh, that uh, then forces all the construction companies to become more and more cost efficient and more effective on their way to do their best quality and as fast as possible. Thank you for listening to the Infrastructure Pioneer podcast. Infrastructure construction from the perspective of BIM specialists and on-site engineers. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and we'll see you next time.